Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting Mocha tutorial. Whenever you want to place a visual element, be that text, particles, an explosion, behind a person or a moving object in your shot, and you didn't use a green screen, you will likely have to revert to rotoscoping. Rotoscoping is the process of cutting out your foreground element, frame by frame, for the purpose of isolating and extracting it from your video. Now, you're either one of those weird people who really likes rotoscoping, or like me, it feels a little bit more like your personal slice of hell. Either way, Mocha Pro from Boris FX, especially since its latest version 2019.5, has some really useful tools to make this whole process a whole lot easier. These include new magnetic splines, a freehand tool, and something that I'm personally really excited about and that is an edge snapping feature that allows you to automatically snap the points of a shape to the outline of your object. In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can use these new tools to save yourself a whole lot of time. But first, full frontal disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Boris FX. Now, I really like using their products and I really enjoy working with their team. And if you want to find out all of the cool stuff that you can do with their tools, go and check out their website at borisfx.com. You can now also get Mocha Pro on an annual subscription for 295 US dollars. And anything on the Boris FX store, you can use my custom coupon code Surfaced Studio in one word to get yourself 15% off the final price. But now I feel like I've waffled on for long enough, so let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome to the exciting world of Adobe After Effects. I already have a very simple composition set up here and it contains my base footage called watergarage.mp4, which is just this really simple clip of water staring confusedly into the garage. As always, if you do want to follow along with this tutorial, you'll be able to download all of these files for free from my website. So simply go to surfacestudio.com forward slash downloads and you'll be able to grab these files to follow along. Now I have already 2D motion tracked this particular clip and created this tracker null object right here that now follows the movement of my shot. So that allows me to just parent other visual elements to it and then composite them realistically into the scene. I have already added another layer called BCC fire into my shot. And if I enable that, it's just this giant line of fire that I've placed into the middle of the shot. I've parented it to this tracker null object just so it follows the camera's movement. The problem now obviously is that, well, that fire element sits in front of water because we haven't visually composited it so it looks like it sits behind him. This now means we need to rotoscope water. We need to kind of cut him out of this moving shot where he is moving a little bit as well and composite him right on top. For that, let's duplicate this water garage layer, and place that on top of the fire. And you now have multiple options. You could obviously just use an After Effects mask, kind of draw around water. Let's just do that really roughly here. And well, there you go, kind of. However, you now need to animate this mask to follow along and this is where it starts getting painful. So let's just delete the mask again. And well, you also have the Roto Brush tool, which allows you to essentially draw and define the opacity of your layer. And then it'll try to automatically follow the movement of your objects. But I'm personally not a big fan of the Roto Brush tool, just because I feel it does a little bit more of what it does rather than what I want it to do. Also, I'm never really happy with the result because the edges always end up flickering a little bit and it always just ends up looking it always ends up looking a little bit weird. I just don't have much control. It just doesn't look as nice and smooth. So let's delete the roto brush effect again. And let's instead use Mocha for the rotoscoping. Let's apply Mocha Pro to our water garage duplicate layer. I'm also going to rename this one to water roto. Make sure your resolution is set to full and let's launch Mocha Pro. Here we are in Mocha and because I have the latest version, it starts out in the essentials workspace. Now I personally prefer using the classic workspace just because it feels more familiar to me. It's got access to all of the pro controls right off the bat. So I prefer using this one, but you can also do most of this in the essentials workflow. Now let's come to the beginning and play this through. This allows us to A, review the footage before we start working with it. And it allows Mocha Pro to cache all of our frames. Cool, that looks good. Now let's rewind and start rotoscoping. Rotoscoping people is generally pretty difficult. I would not recommend creating one shape for the whole thing. I'd recommend just breaking your people down into body parts, as gruesome as that might sound. So let's zoom in a little bit and start creating a spline for the pants first. And traditionally in older versions of Mocha, you just select the create X spline layer tool and start defining your shape kind of outline around the pants. But 
because we are on version 2019.5, the tools I want to use here are the magnetic spline freehand tool and the edge snapping feature. So right next to the X spline layer tool, you've got the magnetic layer tool. So let's simply select that. And that kind of works the way you expect it to. Let's just click here, top left hand side of the pants. Press Z, click and drag to zoom in a little bit. So you can see right here, the magnetic spline tool will automatically follow the edge of contrast along the pen. So I can just drag down here. Um, now it doesn't work anymore once you're off screen. So I wanna get pretty close here, click once to place that point. And now I could either just kind of outline along here, but I could at any point in time switch over to the freehand tool, which allows me to essentially draw any shape I want. For that, all I do is click, hold, and now I'm in freehand mode and I can essentially, I, I could write if I wanted to, I'm totally free to define the spline in any way that you want. So the magnetic tool and the freehand tool work hand in hand really nicely. Um, but let's just undo that because that's not really what I want. I just wanna click, drag, give it a little bit of space at the bottom here and come in again on the right hand side. Once I'm at the pants, let go. It's going to create a new point right there. And again, I'm back in magnetic mode. So I can just kind of come up here, click, create a point and just drag this across and click to close my spline. And Mocha will automatically convert this into a basic spline, but the magnetic tool just helps me define the shape to begin with. Now with this spline still selected, let's first rename this layer to pants. Let's reselect the magnetic spline tool. And over on the right hand side, you actually have an option for detail. And this is the amount of detail for the magnetic spline we've defined. If you wind this down, you can see Mocha is going to reduce the number of points on this spline. As you jack this up, Mocha is going to add more and more detail. And I do want a fair bit of detail because there are some curves around it. And now this is just a standard spline. So I can now start tracking this and working with this. For that, down in my options, I'm going to increase the minimum percentage of pixels used to probably between 80 and 90%. I want this to be fairly accurate. Translation, scale, rotation, and shear don't really need perspective. So we're pretty much set up. Let's simply start tracking forward. Mocha is doing a pretty good job of holding on, but I could see some slippage that we are going to fix in just a little bit. But for now, I'm going to speed the rest of this tracking process up just so that you don't have to sit through this. And it's done. Mocha has done a reasonable job of following that shape. Doesn't quite work as Walter is bending downwards and the belt gets revealed, but we're going to fix that up with some keyframes. And this is where the new edge snapping feature really, really comes in handy. Now let's come to the very last frame. Let's zoom in a little bit. And well, we now have to adjust all of these points and kind of place them back exactly where they needed to go to kind of make this shape follow the movement of the pants properly. And this can be a little bit tedious, especially if you have to do this multiple times because right now we've just created a keyframe on the last frame, which is this little green marker here. But halfway through, we're going to have to create some other keyframes to kind of just you know, like make sure that our points always follow the movement of the pants properly. And I'm pretty sure that the guys from Mocha also figured out, you know, this, this can probably be easier. And so they've added an edge snapping feature. Let's press Z, click and drag up to zoom in a little bit. Let's select a point here on the left hand side, this one, come into the menu and under tools, you'll find a new option called snap selected points or shortcut for that is Alt and S. Remember that that will come super handy. If you select that, Mocha will automatically snap any selected point to the nearest identifiable edge. The cool thing is you can actually do that with a whole bunch of points. So let's select all of the points up here at the top corner where the belt line is, press Alt and S, and Mocha will automatically snap all of them as best as it can to the nearest edge. Now I'm going to press I and add a few more points into this spline because I think it's not detailed enough. I just wanna add a few more, get a bit more detail in there. Let's just reselect all of those again, Alt and S. And you can see this actually snaps pretty well to the belt. Now there might be a few small things that you may want to tweak up, but for the most part, that's done really well. So let's select the points on the right hand side, Alt and S. That looks pretty good. Select all of the ones on the left, Alt and S. Cool, that, that works pretty well. Let's come down. There's a few points here that kind of start overlapping a little bit. I wanna fix those up just so that that doesn't get tangled up, but that looks pretty good. Let's come to the last keyframe. And again, you can see it's off a little bit here. So let's select those points, Alt and S to snap them. Select all of the ones on the left hand side, Alt and S. And they're all already pretty nicely snapped. Let's do the top 
part. Yep, that looks pretty good to me. Just a little bit of an overlap on the left hand side here. That looks pretty good. And let's scrub through and just see where this goes off. Yep, right here, I probably want another keyframe. Again, just selecting all of the ones on the left hand side, Alt and S and snap that. And this is super useful. You can also just drag the points close enough to the edge and press Alt and S just to snap them the rest of the way. It just makes this whole process so much quicker and so much easier. All I'm doing is I'm just selecting the points that I want to snap and press Alt and S to just snap them into place. And then I just fix up any little issues that I might still have. Let's come back to the beginning. Maybe right here again, let's just select a couple of points and press Alt and S a few times just to make this all snap and fall into place. Cool, and that's it. That is actually a pretty damn good track. And all of these keyframes were super easy to create just because I had this edge snapping feature. And that's really the main exciting new features that I wanted to show you in Mocha Pro 2019.5. Now, to give you a satisfying ending, I'm going to continue the process of rotoscoping water out of this shot. And I'm just going to create separate shapes for the torso, the head, left and right arm. And once all of that is done, let's jump back into After Effects. Back in After Effects on our Walter Roto layer, let's come into the Mocha Pro effect, expand at the matte option. You can either view your matte, so what we've defined in Mocha Pro, or let's disable then simply hit apply. So that's going to apply our Mocha Pro rotoscoping directly to our layer. And if I now rewind and play this back, that is pretty darn good especially considering that I spent 30, maybe 40 minutes max on this entire rotoscoping job. The new edge snapping feature in the latest version of Mocha Pro is a huge time saver and I do really like having the magnetic and freehand tools to set up that initial spline. Another cool thing to note is that all of these new features are actually available in all variants and integrations of Mocha Pro. That means they're also available in the latest versions of the Boris Continuum Complete and Sapphire Effects collections from Boris Effects. And this will work in After Effects, Premiere Pro, Avid Media Composer and all other supported hosts. And it just makes life so much easier whenever you have to deal with any sort of rotoscoping. And that is all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave all of that down in the comment section below. If you want to watch more filmmaking, visual effects, 3D tutorials, click these links over on the right hand side. And finally, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later.